Hey guys, how's it going? I'm planting some gorgeous perennials in my garden today that I'm really excited to share with you. I mean, just look at them. They're so pretty, but I'm very excited about this entire flower bed. I feel like it's starting to come together a little bit. I've already mulched this area and that always helps too. It makes everything feel really finished and very tidy. Um, but you can see I've got three hostas. I don't know if you can see the one in the back there, but I've got three diamond lake that kind of go around the base of this honey locust tree here. And then I've just planted five perennial ferns and then there's some Jack of Diamonds Brennera. A um, little bit breezy out today, actually feels really good, but uh, sweet woodruff, like beyond that. And it's just, I don't know, it's starting to feel like a cozy flower bed. And of course, later on in the season, after these plants put on some growth, it really fills in. And I typically come in with some annuals over here as well. Um, so this is the plant I'm putting in. Let's get in close on it. Look at the detail. So these are called Fun and Games I Spy Hookerella. Erin wanted to title this video, Holy Hookerella Blooms. And we might still do that because Oh my word, the show that these plants are putting on right now is just incredible. And they start blooming like this, like maybe mid spring and go through early summer. Um, and you can see that we've got lots of mature blooms right here, which I love to use in flower arrangements, but we also have a lot of flower stalks just coming up, like fresh ones that are just in bud stage. Um, so you can see that these keep pushing bloom stalks and they bloom like this for a very long time and they do attract honeybees which is really fun to watch um, but i do have another one of these in the greenhouse that's out of bloom um, so i want to put a picture of that up on the screen so you can see what to expect uh, you know how they look after they're done blooming and i think they're equally as beautiful in bloom as they are out of bloom because their leaves are so interesting um, and we have done a video explaining the differences between a hookera, a tiarella, and a hookerella like this. So we'll link that down below if you want to learn a little bit more about that. But kind of in short, a hookera, which you might be a little bit more familiar with, uh, they typically need a little bit more sun in order to produce a really good color and bloom really well. And they're available in a lot of different colors. And then you have your tiarellas, which are more of a woodland type plant and they need more shade. They typically don't have as bright and vibrant of colors. Then you have the hookerella, which is the marriage between a hookera and a tiarella. So you kind of get the best of all the worlds. So you get better color in bloom and leaves, but these can tolerate a really shady situation, which I know a lot of us have um, those shady spots where we want something that really shines, that blooms beautifully, but can handle those shady locations. These can also um, handle more moist soil. Um, so if you have areas that hold on to a little bit more moisture, if they're shady, this is a great plant. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, just scoot the mulch out of the way. We'll get these planted. Uh, and then I might at some point come in and add more or I might leave the area for annuals, but let's get these planted and see how they look. look so beautiful and they really contrast the mulch really well I mean look at this leaf and this is another reason or another way that they're they look a little bit different than hookahs is that they are much heavier lobed and they've got more pointy leaves on the ends there so they've just got a little bit of a different shape than hookahs but I think that they're just so beautiful and that chartreuse color just really shows up beautifully now it's very tempting this time of year to want to plant all the things and plant this whole area like i could have just decked this whole area out with hookerellas but i have to keep in mind that this variety of hosta this is a diamond lake grows up to 45 inches wide so like it can grow you know this wide so if i were to plant another one right here of the hookerella which i kind of wanted to do but i'm holding myself back right now 
eventually those two plants are not going to be happy with each other. They'll be too crowded. So this time of year and you know when your gardens are younger, it's just a good idea to properly space everything out and then just plant annuals in the meantime to like fill up your space if that's the look that you like. Um, so I'm not sure if I mentioned how big these get, but eight to 10 inches tall in terms of foliage. And then of course the bloom stalks make them much taller. And then these themselves will spread out 16 to 20 inches. So they're not a tiny perennial. I mean, they'll, they'll fill in this space beautifully. Um, they're also a zone four through nine. So they're pretty winter hardy as well. Um, now a couple of questions that I see often when I'm planting in areas like this are how do you plant and not make a mess in your mulch when you just saw that I scoop my mulch out of the way. I use the plant can, so I slide the plant out of its can, and then I fill the can with the soil that I'm digging out of the hole. And a lot of times I have to use a lot of that to backfill around the root ball, um, and, but that way it keeps all of the soil, the native soil contained somewhere and not in a pile next to my plant where all the mulch is. And that way I can just scoot the mulch back in place after I'm all done. And the other thing is, how do you plant things so near trees without running into roots? Which I do occasionally run into roots, not a lot. And I don't know if it's because our water table is not very high. So our trees really have to go searching for water um, so that we don't have a lot of surface roots, which is very nice. But um, I did run into a pretty sizable root when I dug up this hole right here. And I'm not sure that you could see that on the camera, but it's a pretty good sized root right there. Um, so what I do in that, that case is I kind of dig my hole a little wonky, kind of to the side of the root, the tree root, and then I can squish the root ball of the perennial a little bit. I kind of fluff the soil, as much of the soil out of the root ball as I can, and then I can kind of squish it and slide it in next to the tree root. And you do have to keep in mind that now these two plants are competing. You've got a tree root that wants water and you've got a perennial that wants water. So you just need to be mindful of that and give the plants what they need, especially because these do tend to like a little bit more moist soil anyway. But I can completely, completely control the water in this area because I have a drip system already in place. In fact, I think the drip line ran right behind. Yeah, it's right here. There's a brown tube that runs underneath the mulch here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna be able to access water and get water to each individual plant and I can control how much and how often these plants receive water. So that's pretty much it guys. I just wanted to show you this plant going in and I just feel like it's a really good option for a shady area in your garden. And you can kind of see it up against other structures and textures of shade perennials that I already have in this area with the Brennera and the ferns and the hosta. I think they're all just such pretty plants. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.